Okay, let's get to another moho window. And then, I hate to say it, but more boosters. Oh, and headlights. <laughs> headlights might be good. Last time I tried to put lights on, I don't think they work very well. Anyway, yeah, to maintain balance, we gotta put them on the back, too. I should probably make them red or something, but... Got that. Um, so, well... Just keep it simple. We've got two boosters, we can put four boosters. No, they're in the wrong symmetry. And then we can use more of the Rhino stage in order to do the transfer. I mean... We could pack more. But we were close anyway. But it's saying that my Delta V is less than it was before. <laughs> You might not make it. We have more Delta V now, though. But it's because it's not counting these the right way. And I don't know if there's anything I can do to coax it to do that correctly. So, anyway, Moho Rover Launch 2. Honestly, we don't need that mob propellant. Hold on. That's only if the rover was getting back to the transfer vessel, which it will not. Why do I just click the wrong one? Okay, this decoupler is the problematic one. That's the other way around. <laughs> Why? Why are you the other way around anyway? How did you even work? Okay, uh, we don't need these. All right, here we go. Yeah, the extending nozzle engine saved us there, I guess. It extended the thrust transform below the decoupler. Okay, we are past the speed of sound. Okay, why, when are these boosters gonna go out? Come on. Okay, off. Ah, uh, let's just coast. <laughs> yeah, okay. The boosters, the extra two boosters didn't give us a huge amount of extra Delta V though. It's a little bit worrisome. It's hoping for a little bit more. Okay, well, that's good enough for a start. Okay, now, over there, no, that's not really where I want to meet up with it, but unlike the last one, we don't have the ascending and descending node in a nice place. Off we go. Okay, go. Go, Tuba, go. Uh, I think we've gone too far here. Or maybe not. Maybe not far enough. Um, right, well, as usual, making a maneuver will show me the truth a little bit. Uh, let's just correct it. So, what we want to do is... Maybe further out here. I want to push that descent, uh, ascending node into it. This doesn't look like we're getting the slowest pass at Moho, though. But I can't even check how fast or slow we'd be going and how much speed we'll have to burn off at a time because we can't see the Delta V for the second node. Okay, well that's crashing. That's nice. We really actually want more inclination than we're getting here. And I guess we'll have to deal with that later. Okay, this time I'll definitely want the periapsis load before we get there. Alright, 732 meters per second for the mid course correction. Up we go again.
Well, go ahead. Uh, maybe I shouldn't tweak it that much. We can rove after all. Okay, well, it doesn't seem to cost that much. I think this is what we're going for here. We'll still have this stage. We won't have to use the rover to help capture this time. That's good. Okay, and... Ignition. Please be right. Let's just verify that we're in line with the target still. Okay, it looks good. Seem to be good on Delta V. The landing site is actually in daylight this time. We're coming in on daylight. It's all... All... Wine and roses. Is Moho a bowling ball? <laughs> Is Moho a bowling ball with these three craters here? Hmm. A little bit far apart though. But our periapsis is going a little bit low, so let's sort of tilt up a bit. No, we're, we're trying not to impact. We are trying to get as close as possible though. Very oberthy, even though Moho is not very good at that. Our capture event is all the way over there. Barely safe. Now we have too much fuel. This time, uh, somehow I, I ended up with way too much this time. Come on, orbit. Happen. We're pretty much in line, so I don't feel a need to keep the orbit high in order to fix things or something like that. I just need to make sure that the periapsis doesn't get too low. Okay, so obviously we are going to bring the orbit further down here and set up the approach. But we're probably going to be time warp limited like this. Okay, around we go. Well, we can probably use this stage to come to a dead stop over the target before landing the rover. Well, there's one of those craters. Right in line here. Maybe we'll end up going past because it can't slow us down quickly enough. Seems like a rather small croissant. No, we're going too far. <laughs> As usual, we did this on Elu too. And we sort of see something there. It's a bit bigger than some of the other monuments. Actually, right now, the ant engines could probably power this back into orbit. The rover, I mean. If we wanted to try that sort of thing. Well, we would not want to, like, soil the croissant. Okay, so... Okay, wrong one. Wrong one. You're still... Oriented up, right? Good rover. But it's fully fueled, so its thrust weight ratio is not as good as it was last time. And what kind of creature is that? Or is it really a croissant? It looks very much like a croissant, though, this time. 
None of this looks like tough terrain for the rover to handle. But I guess we'll see. I mean, I could probably get closer. But that's risky with the rocket engines. Oh, I still have that. Okay, I think we might as well land and taxi over. Uh, don't come back. Oh, come on. Uh, a little bit further this way. Awkward. I mean, it's got wheels. It probably can sustain a decent landing speed, but... Okay. Um, I guess I should go forward now. Well, um, I don't think we've done radiation observations here. Let's do that first. Oh, I guess the grabber can grab something. It says everything is done. We can transmit something, even. Well, I don't mind if I do. Carefully approaching the croissant. Just in case it wakes up. <laughs> You never know. It was that creature in the asteroid in Star Wars. This part of the croissant? Can I just tuck in here? Okay. Yes. But the important one is the surface survey. Okay. Well, transmit what we can, but there are samples that could be returned. Not as valuable as the Elu ones, even though Moho's sort of harder, but... Okay, let's get a better view of the croissant, and then I'll see if I can get this into orbit, but it's tighter now. I used extra hovering around. Um... I mean, that... That flap right there, I mean, that's totally a croissant. You can't can't ignore that. That's how croissants are. <laughs> so, are there sentient croissants? Hmm. Anyway, uh, well, let's control from up and then try to get this back into orbit. And maybe that's not going to work out. I don't know. Okay, SAS on, and go. Yeah, go. Right over to Corsant. Okay. Let's try and do this efficiently somehow. Pretty tight. Okay, we're in orbit. It's a very, very, very tight orbit. I don't have any plans to tug this back to Kerbin. Plans are a strong word. We're just gonna leave it here and we'll think about it really hard. <laughs> but anyway, it, it could get into orbit and it'll be more convenient to get its science if it is in orbit, so now it's in orbit. Well, I guess we did a science there. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what, what's going on there. But anyway, so at least it's here and it'll be interesting to see if it stays here safely or something. Let's go to mission control. Oh, I think we have to. Yeah, we've got the surface sample, right? But we have I think when it says return a surface sample report of the croissant, it really wants it back. So I think we do have to sort of transfer it. Okay, well, we're gonna have to send something to grab it. We have no choice. 
Okay. So, next Moho window. At least they happen relatively quickly. Heck, I think we were at one. Uh, we can go now. It's a little bit far. If we wait, we'd have to wait for Moho to go all the way around. This is a little bit more than 108 degrees, but yeah. Well, let's test how small a little... How, how small a little thing. How small a thing we can use for this purpose. Okay, it, it's... I can hear clicks when I press escape, but it's not showing me the VAB. And it didn't save. So hopefully it's in a nice save state in an auto save. But I have to restart. Oh, this is still in the middle of... Okay, let's not do that. Uh, no, don't do that. Um, we definitely have one that's after the burn. Or not. Or... Yeah, I guess not. Okay, fine. We're we're still burning for orbit. Just sort of saves at a random time, the game, sometimes. <laughs> okay. In orbit. Okay, so I want a tiny little pod with the tiny little controller and see if it alone can bring the stuff down. But we're gonna tug the whole rover back to Kerbin. So just in case, it'll be accessible at Kerbin if we need to bring it down. But my guess is that we don't. That already has a reaction wheel. Um, do we need any other container? Probably a battery. And a comm device. But that all that stuff can be on the non-return portion. What we need is a parachute only. Parachute, but we only have these. <laughs> That's overkill on parachutes. Do I trust it? Speaking of things, um, minimum pressure. I, I don't know. Whatever. That, 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 that whole number seems weird to me anyway. So that's just the deorbit package for the science. It's like one of those camera return pods for the spy satellites or something. But we need to push around the rover. Pretty heavy. 1.79 tons, that's really heavy. Let's see, what, what can we dump on here that's 1.79 tons-ish? That's close, let's just dump a tuna can on there for reference. Uh, just for margin. Uh, that might complicate things, let me not do that. Really? I don't trust you that it only, if I put that on there, it only cuts out the delta V by 100 meters per second. Hmm. I sort of like having RTGs since I don't have to pay for them. Okay. More ejection force. I think the next stage should also have more propellant just in case we need to have it help out. We're, this is gonna take more than actually bringing the rover over there, I swear. 16 tons of thrust, 20 tons of mass. Well, we could probably even put a little bit more fuel on here. They'll share the mop propellant with what we have up there, but this is just so that we can dock with this just in case. 70 tons of thrust, 70 tons of dry mass. It's practically, uh, can almost lift off if it was in vacuum, but not in atmosphere. Well, it's gonna need some boosters to take off. So, we have overwhelming delta V. We could probably pack an extra reaction wheel. We've only got the reaction wheel in the little nanopod. Okay, let's try this out.